floppies. They are annoying. Let me show you exactly how to transfer a program, how to view it, how to name it, how to put it back and forth, and do all that stuff so I can help you get a program onto your machine. I'm the CNC repairman. Are you the belt? I'm gonna show you how the Niagara Falls tool pop. The tricky part about floppies is that while they're old technology, they don't work that well with new Windows or Apple computers, and we try to put big programs on them, and it's confusing. There's all these different versions of software, and each one's a little different. Now, you might have had a floppy on your machine, and then you upgraded it to a USB or some other network device. You didn't change the machine, so we still have to know how the machine thinks it's gonna see the floppy, and what menus we can use, and how to name the files. That's the part I wanna show you, and we'll go slow. So to start with, you may or may not have an LCD screen. You probably have an older CRT screen or an upgrade, but it's still CNC generation. LCD, CRT, acronym, acronym. Okay, depending on your age and your machine, you may or may not have a floppy. The floppy might be in the back, the floppy might be in the pendant, or you have a floppy conversion, which is still a floppy to the machine. You go to your list program page and it could look like this, or it could look like this, but let's just say it looks like this. You might have some tabs on this side that say USB or network or hard drive. The majority of the older machines are gonna look like this. So if you have a floppy and you pop it in, okay, well that, that didn't do a whole lot. I wanna get a program onto the machine. There's two ways to view what's on the floppy. Right now we have no programs in memory. If we hit F4, that's gonna create a directory, which is like a program. You can't run it, but you could go view it. Now the star next to it means it's active. So if we hit edit, it pulls up like a program, and this is all the text, it's in parentheses. So we have a program called O12344NC, and a program called o 1234 five, and C, and a couple more programs. Those are programs that we could load. Now here's the tricky part. This is a kind of like a lunchbox with lunch in it, or a file with a program in it. This is where it's confusing and Windows will leave us to be wondering. This is the file, here is the program. And programs need to be very specific to be loaded into the machine or they will not accept the format. You must have a percent sign. You, at the beginning, you must have a percent sign at the end or no go. Empty program errors. You gotta watch it. Some software strip the percent signs or they add double percent signs. So if you have two at the beginning, it sees the beginning and the end and goes empty program. You don't have to have an M30, but that just shows the end of the program and all the code in between. You have to start your program with the letter O. If we go here and look at list program, see how I have an O, then zero, which the slash through it, eight, nine, 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 nine. Now we'll add more programs in a minute. So your program must start with an O in the program, not the file, the program. The file can be named anything you want, but don't confuse yourself. Name the program and the file, the same thing. So we would name this O1234. So let's do it real quick. O, not a zero, O1234. What about extensions? Well, let's look here. Let's go back to edit. We could name it NC. That would be for numerical control. I think that's what it is back in the day. So dot NC. And C, or we could do dot txt for text file, or we could do dot pgm. Now the machine itself could care less what the extension is. It doesn't care. That's this, it doesn't care. It cares about this. But you can't have a five digit extension or some wonky, wonky stuff. The same thing with this number for here. Don't put uh, op three train bell whistle with lowercase and uppercases dot nc. This is not going to like it. This is old DOS format. Eight digits dot 
three maximum extensions, eight by three. You're not gonna be able to view these programs, not the program, you'll not be able to view the file on the floppy system if it's not eight, well, eight by three or less than that, that's okay too. And it's annoying, I get it, you have all these programs and you wanna know what uh, the comment is. No, keep it simple. Number with O by file extension, then that matches what's on the inside. And I'll, I'll go over that in a minute here. So, we're looking, there's two ways to look at what's on the floppy. One is this directory list. But if we go back to this program, it doesn't help us. So we'd have to look at the directory list and edit and go, okay, there is a, not a program, a file called 012344.nc. Let's call that up. This is old school. I'm back here. I'm going to go to all. At the bottom we have disk read, disk directory, disk write. So I'm going to go the letter O, 1234.nc nc, that's the extension, and then I'm gonna hit F3 to disk read. So this page, oh, file not found. Good, we're having some issues. It was one, two, three, four, four. You gotta have the, you gotta know the names of the things that you're doing. Okay, reset that alarm, back to this program. O, one, two, three, four, four, dot, nc. It's gonna go see if that file is on the floppy, then put it into memory. F4, F3, disk read, tick, 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 floppy turns. Hey, look, there is our program, there is our comment. That's, now it doesn't have the NC, notice it's just 012344. That's the name of the program, and if I hit edit, 012344, just like I have. Now here's the other thing, the machine strips the percent signs. So you won't see the percent sign in the program here but you have to have them to put it into the machine, you have to have them to pull it out of the machine. When the machine outputs it, it puts the percent signs on there. So let's do some more talking. All right, there are more programs on this, and I have one in memory here. I know there are more programs on there because I put them on my laptop, or I looked at them on the directory list. But what's another way to do this? Let's hit edit, let's go over and hit F1, which changes the menu options, we're gonna go over, and then disk directory is at the bottom. So this is a different way to do what we just did. So let's hit disk directory. It reads everything that's on the, the floppy and puts it here on the screen. Now this is not list program, this is just a visual directory. So we have a file called 012344.nc. We have another file called 012345.nc. So we can actually arrow between these, and this is, I like this page, it's simpler than typing it in. I'm gonna just hit enter on this page, and look, disk read, it's gonna read it, it's gonna put it into list program, make it the active program, and then boom, it's already active. So we're still on this edit page, if I go back to list program, I've got two programs now here in memory. The 012345, that's asterisk, if we go back to memory, actually, yeah, let's go to memory, there it is. So this page, I had to go down to all, I had to type in 01234 with the extension, hit F3, it looked on the floppy, found it, copied it into memory. This page where I hit edit, F1, I went over here and I hit disk directory, it showed me what was on there, and then I can copy them and put them into memory. The third way is to just write down on a piece of paper or know the program you had on your floppy. You go back to here, just flat type it in and hit read. So we got write, read, write would be to put something onto the floppy. Remember I said you can get confused between this number and this number. So let's go ahead and do that. Ready? We're gonna go to edit, because I like this edit page. I'm gonna hit F1, we're gonna go over, hit disk directory. You want to run a new program, you just edited something on your computer, you plopped it on the floppy, you go to your machine. This is what has to happen all the time. Come down here, oh, yep, I want to load 012333. Three. Okay, hit enter. It's going to read it. And you hit a little floppy, click, disk done. Great. Okay, let's go here. Where is 012333? Three. I don't see it. Something wrong with my floppy, darn it. Oh, 
oh, but why is this program in memory? Okay, let's go back and look here at edit again. I'll go over disk directory. Okay, there it is. There it is. All right, I'm going to I'm going to copy it, hit F. I'm going to hit enter on that 033. That's the one I want to run. Disk read overwrite 004567. I don't know what that is. Sure. Well, no, no, don't overwrite it. Wait a minute. Here's what happened. Here's the scenario. This says 0123333. The program inside the file is 04567. Now this might seem simple. I don't want to make it too simple, but I've gone out to people's shops and had to explain them to this to people. So I'm doing this to help you. This was named one thing, this was named another. So let's just hit overwrite, yes. The difference is that you can save them as different. So if we come back to here, that's the program name that's inside, not the one that's outside. So when we save this on the machine, back to if you made edits and you wanna put it back on your computer, it's important to save this machine program as the file name that's just going to make it easier. So let's back it up. So this is selected. I'm going to come down and I'm going to say I want to save this to the floppy. I'm going to go 0, 0, 4, 5, 6, 7. I've got to give it an extension. NC, PGM for program, TXT. If your cam system gives you a different extension, that's great. Your computer won't always open those extensions correctly or it'll double label extensions, which this doesn't like. So you'll save a program on here and you'll give it a .nc and then it will throw on a .txt or some other extension and you come over to here to read it. It's double extensioned. That's not part of our eight by three configuration. Machine won't read it. So it's important for this to all work correctly. Label the program right with parentheses, label the file correctly. So let's see here. We're just going to call it NC. Now we're going to hit F3. No, no, F2 for disk write. It's going to send it. We'll hear it click. Now it'll click disk done. Now let's go back to edit. Let's go over to F1. Let's go over to disk directory. And now look, now we have this 012344 and then the 123 Three, three, and we have this 04567, which is the one I just saved, which is a copy of the 033. If I was to pull this out, floppies are annoying, man. Have a box of them and have more than one reader, and you have to like sometimes boot your computer with the floppy. It's just Windows 10, Windows 11, newer stuff doesn't work really well with old floppies, and you gotta go to your PC, try to pull up disk A or disk B. I plugged this one in twice so it says B now. Usually it's A. Uh, floppies are just old and, and not a lot of people are using them, but there's tons of equipment out there that still uses them. So if we look here, these are all little files and I've set up my PC here to accept a .nc extension as a text file. You can just create a new text file, give it an extension, put a parentheses right, 01234, put in a couple of M codes, put an M30, put a percent sign, and you just wrote a program on your computer you can send to the machine. So if we were to open a couple of these, let's do the one I just saved, which is the 04567. Okay, there's the percent sign, there's the O with the five digits. Anything in parentheses, the machine will ignore and will put as the comment. If we scroll to the bottom, here's our parentheses. If I open up one of these uh, 222 ones, uh, that's that's the file name, 012322, but the program name is 012377. Don't let this confuse you. Stick to the file name and the program name is the same thing. I'm not a huge fan of the, I already said this, the USB to floppy conversions. I think they just add an extra layer of, some people love them and they work great. I've not had good success with it. So two ways to view programs. You can read and write from them here, but you gotta know the extension. You can make a directory list. You can also view them and edit. This machine does not have a USB 
floppy PC-104 card. I have a whole video about that. If you have questions, the only difference would be if that was the case, you'd have a little tab here and you could choose memory or USB or floppy or hard drive. The function is still the same. On this machine over here, it's a newer software. It's gonna have the same tabs and it's gonna operate the same way, but just use the USB. Not a lot of people use floppy. If you're interested in understanding RS-232, I'm gonna have a video all about that. You can go find. That uses the send and receive, uses an RS-232 program. You can transfer files that are bigger than 1.4 megabytes or DNC them. So a lot of different ways to do all of this. And some people even do DNC from USB. I just made this because I wanted to help you understand why can't I get a program to my machine. Another thing, if your machine is in metric and you're trying to send it inch programs, it'll throw a fit. Floppies fail all the time. I think three of these were bad just this morning. So have extra floppies. I've seen these fail. Empty program alarms, empty uh, floppy read air stuff. People are annoyed by floppies because they just act up all the time. I think, my opinion, you're here watching my video, RS-232 is the way to go. It's consistent and it works. It's slow, it's annoying, but you aren't dealing with this. Just hit send, hit send, the program shows up. If you need more information about your machine, want to learn more, check out all of our YouTube videos. But we made this video to help you, so I hope you have a good business and get your machine running and making good parts. See you out on the Instagram, YouTube, or give us a call if you need help. Talk to you later.